been made mightier without wood. Hey, welcome to Pen Made Mightier. I'm Gideon Ray. Today we're going to talk about a show that I absolutely love called In the Flesh. It's a UK drama about um, people who come back from the dead as zombies and they start wreaking havoc on everything. But where the show actually picks up, they have developed a drug that can put people back <laughs> in their right state of mind. The story central focus is all around characters that return home and have to deal with the fact and the trauma of being undead. And, well, for some people it's harder than others. It's a really fantastic show whether you like zombies or not. If you love zombies, you should really watch it. If you just want to see some really good interpersonal drama, you should still watch it. It's a fantastic show. And I think that's because, like most zombie media, and particularly in the flesh, it plays to a lot of really powerful themes that are always congruent with where we are in society. Of course, as with most zombie shows, the primary theme is loss, because they really want to make you feel it when a character has passed, but more importantly in this one, how they feel when a character comes back, and how they feel about the fact that characters are coming back. It's remarkable, and I'm telling you, there is nothing sadder or more endearing than seeing an aging man hugging his wife and realizing that a week ago she was probably chewing on someone's face. They do a fantastic job of making you still feel like these people aren't 100% back because they have to wear makeup on their faces to look normal and contacts so their eyes look decent. Not great, but decent. But you can always tell them when you see them. It's really fantastic in that way and amazing to see how pained some people are when their loved ones return. The main character, as a matter of fact, uh, you know what, uh, spoilers? Because you should watch this. Um, I'll put an annotation to where you can skip so we can get over this major spoiler. Okay, they're gone. The main character killed himself. He was torn up over his friend, maybe lover, leaving for the military, and he just couldn't take it. And he killed himself. And he comes back home to a family that buried a boy for ending his life and they just couldn't understand. To make matters worse, his sister has become a war hero during the zombie uprising, meaning that she hates all rotters, as they call them. <sighs> meaning that she can't even relate to her own brother anymore. And maybe she never wanted to, because sometimes people don't like it when people commit suicide. It hurts. And his family, his mother and father, obviously don't really know how to connect with him either because their son is back from the dead, but he wanted to be dead. It's complicated. And because of that, it really deals a lot with mental trauma and with mental illness and with depression and anxiety in a meaningful way because you're seeing people after they have gone to the full ends of things, which means you can see both reactions of the family and of the person suffering from the anxiety and depression as well, which gives a really wonderful window to view the real pains of mental trauma in a way that most shows wouldn't even dare attempt, and In the Flesh does it effortlessly. They're really brilliant. It also touches on post-traumatic stress disorder, both for the soldiers who fight in the military and also for those who are coming back from the dead, uh, the main character has flashes of chewing on people in supermarkets. He remembers killing people and eating them, and being out of control of his own body. The trauma really eats him alive. Oh wow, that was a bad choice of words. <laughs> Sorry. But there's the soldiers too, obviously. The soldiers who came back from combat, who came back from putting down zombies, now have to live side by side with them in a world that no longer wants or needs them. And as we know, that rarely ends well. It also discusses the power of religion, which I'm a big fan of, and they use some religious doctrines to turn people against these people, although some people say that their resurrection is a gift from God, and it goes back and forth, and some people think this, and some people think that. But the truth of the matter is, people are swayed 
by their religion in, in the flesh in a way that most shows kind of gloss over. Uh, I'd love to see more superhero shows deal with this because I've always wondered you know, how followers of God would come to peace with the, the fact that suddenly people uh, can fire ice out of their nostrils. And likewise, it's cool to see people have to deal with the fact that God allowed or made people rise from the dead. How do you come to peace with that? This show deals with it in a really smart way. As I said about the soldiers, it really deals a lot with turning swords to plowshares in them giving up their guns and having to reintegrate into society and how much trouble that can be. And it's nice to see, uh, it's nice to see anything deal with it, really. Because I can't think of many people that even tried. I mean, I think, guess like technically movies like Rambo are about stuff like that, but you don't see it very often. And you rarely see it done as well as I think In the Flesh manages to pull it off. It even manages to touch on addiction. And the fact that several characters begin to start abusing some illegal substances later on. That allows them to retake their zombified essence and attack people for thrills or for power. Um, or maybe just to feel different. In that way, uh, yeah, it deals with it in a really powerful and interesting way. Um, it's nice to see addiction talked about in more more terms than simply characters making huge mistakes that were easily preventable because they're stupid. And uh, I appreciate that. The best thing about zombie stories in general, in the flesh, Walking Dead, 20 days later, any zombie story, the zombies can be anything. That's what makes it so cool. If you've got a group and you hate them and you don't want them destroying your country, you can make them an analog for the zombies, or vice versa, I guess the zombies are analogs of them. You can do that with, uh, you don't like terrorists? Terrorists can be zombies. You don't like Nazis? Nazis can be zombies. You don't like hippies? Hippies can be zombies. You don't like that rock and roll band and their loud music? They can be zombies. Football players have been zombies in cartoon shows, for God's sake. We're talking about any group that is, in any way, that you would consider beneath you, ravenous and destructive, you could say, zombies, look at them. So much so that people today even refer to kids on their cell phones as like cell phone zombies or Facebook zombies. I hear that term a lot. And I think that that's a, yeah, yeah, viable. I can see why you'd say that. Personally, I think that In the Flesh is about um, the dangers of untreated mental illness and the dangers of giving into religion. Um, not that religion is bad, of course, I'm far from it, but I believe that if people decide that they want to put their personal agendas up on a podium and then use a religion to back it up, it can be done. There's always an argument to be made, and people should be careful about it. And thankfully, I think people are more careful about it now than they used to be, but some states make me wonder. Ha ha ha! So, that being said, I really think the show struck a real good chord with me there, but I know many people who would read the show very differently. I think that's why it's universal. Beyond that, they also do a really fantastic story in a second, where people are at the graveyard, and the graveyard that they go to now isn't the main graveyard. The primary graveyard where everybody was buried before the rising with the granite headstones we all know and love is abandoned. It's like unclean ground that nobody goes to. So the graveyard where they bury people now is in town, centralized, local, easily protected and defended. And they just put people in a box, put them below ground. I still say they should have burned them, but maybe the show could pull it off in their budget. And then they drive a white cross into the ground in front of them. It's simple. And it's simple because they need it to be because they were burying so many people during the zombie uprising they couldn't afford elaborate funerals like the ones we have today. It was really good. And as people are leaving, you can see in the background behind the crowd as they pass through the gates a pile of these pre-made white crosses showing you in that one moment that they were ready for hundreds of deaths that it was expected, and they wanted to be ready for it before it happened, because it was just going to happen. So, brilliant! 
Brilliant bit of world building without even trying. <laughs> Do think they should have burned him though. But you know what? Even though uh, even though I say that, I guess it could be a thing where it's sort of about the religion thing. Because some people think that the rising was a good thing, and they think it was about a gift from God, and they think it's going to happen again. So uh, I don't know. Maybe that's uh, yeah. I don't know if I thought about that. That's true. So, where should we start seeing this kind of vague storytelling used? These universal themes that can be applied to anybody? It's uh, not easy to pin down, because you need so many universal themes that can easily be applied like a fresh coat of paint over anything and everything. We could start seeing this in a lot of science fiction shows with things like androids and cybernetics, and I think that that would be really fantastic. To see that there's a stigma against these things possibly because of an AI malfunction. I guess they kind of tried that a bit in Almost Human, but I don't feel like they exactly succeeded on how much they could have pushed that, and I think it probably would have saved that show and given it a second season, because once things become more universal and everybody can relate to it a bit better, it becomes a lot easier to sell a story like this. It could also be used in fantasy shows, um, stuff like Once Upon a Time, um, where you deal with a lot of monsters and curses so long as it's some universally hated group and there's a lot of vague themes that can be applied to just about anybody or any group it could uh yeah you could really start to see more play in that regard other things that i think use this to a wonderful degree are the games dark souls and the witcher because these games use a lot of uh big open-ended broad terminology for some very vague concepts, and your mind will naturally fill those in with the kind of groups you want them to represent. Which, yeah, I think that works. And I think that more game developers especially should be looking at this because uh, it means it's easier to get your audience engaged by doing less work. And if that's not something that every video game development team is screaming for, I don't know what is. So, anyway, thank you guys for listening to me about In the Flesh. Go and watch it all if you haven't seen it, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye now.